Even when he's not cooking or swearing or racking up Michelin stars, he's entertaining. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the 10 funniest Gordon Ramsay moments. Uh, Gordon. Oh, Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. We're gonna be focusing on this culinary icon's funniest moments outside of his own cooking shows. All right, let's dig in. This is an Italian tragedy. Number 10, the swear jar. No, I don't know because uh, you were being naughty and you knew it. Now this, to borrow from our British friends, was a bloody brilliant idea. During a 2017 visit to The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, Gordon Ramsay, whose penchant for cursing is arguably his most well-known trait, was forced to pay up every time he swore. I'm lost for f***ing words. <laughs> I, I, it's, okay, sorry, okay, stop. Fallon instituted the policy after Ramsay's last visit, where he allegedly got a little too naughty for late-night television. Unsurprisingly, the swear jar was filled to the brim by the time Ramsay's visit was over. It seems he's unwilling or unable to keep a lid on his potty mouth. Although someone just told me, uh, literally two minutes ago, that on Sunday, this country is going to be eating 1.3 billion chicken wings. Yeah. <laughs> Number nine, his Australian TV interview. What happens when two provocative, profanity-loving entertainers share a stage? Some damn good television, that's what. In Australia, to headline the Good Food and Wine Show, Gordon Ramsay stopped by Rove McManus's variety show for an interview. I'm about six foot two, size 15 feet, so, you know, I... Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> so I have a big dick, is that what you're saying? However, it quickly devolved into a battle of wits between the two men, with Ramsay repeatedly making fun of McManus's height and the sharp-tongued host clapping back by calling him a, quote, shithead. I'm not a savage chef. No, I'm a man. You are, but hang on, yes you are. Listen, I am not going to start arguing with a dwarf. Listen to me. <laughs> it was all in good fun and demonstrated that Gordon Ramsay is just as comfortable trading barbs on a talk show as he is in the kitchen. We had one guy in L.A. Um, literally seven months ago that picked up a knife and threw it. Yeah, he was a shit shot because he missed. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, his visit to James Corden's hotel. Welcome to Hometel Corden. In a riff on Gordon Ramsay's hotel hell, James Corden invited the celebrity chef to spend a night at Hometel Corden. Staying in the Corden suite, the finest suite in the house, isn't it? Much to his dismay, Ramsay encounters every manner of inconvenience while staying at the talk show host's home. From being greeted with a lingering hug and kiss to the James Corden suite decorated with Corden paraphernalia. This is very much where the magic happens, you know what I'm talking about? In this bed. This is where I masturbate, yep. Corden even provides his guest with dinner and a show. If your idea of a nice dinner is random foods arranged to look like a face, and your idea of a show is Corden doing karaoke. This is how we do it, sha la 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 Ramsay may be acting, but it doesn't diminish our entertainment levels in the slightest. I've got one idea that can help fix this place. <laughs> Gordon! Number seven, flubbing his lines. If I make any more than six mistakes tonight, you're all coming to Clarity's and my guest for dinner, okay? The popular panel show that's been around since 1990, Have I Got News For You, regularly features celebrity hosts. In 2006, Gordon Ramsay was tasked with helming the program for an evening, but things didn't exactly work out in his favor. At the beginning of the show, he promised to buy the entire audience dinner at one of his restaurants if he made more than six mistakes. One pensioner tries to leave without paying... Oh, b first one. <laughs> Well, they didn't have to wait long. Ramsey had six mistakes under his belt before the end of the first segment. Putin immediately rang the warehouse. What about the White you? House. <laughs> it was a refreshing change of pace to see the other guests turn the tables on the indomitable chef, as he ended up being the butt of the joke for much of the episode. Shall we continue? Yeah. Right, thank you. Um, does Is anyone... that how you speak in your kitchen? <laughs> Number six, eating Hawaiian pizza. Even casual Gordon Ramsay fans know about his aversion to Hawaiian pizza. He never misses an opportunity to lambaste the controversial dish, famously quipping, quote, you don't put pineapple on a f***ing pizza during his stint as the host of The Nightly Show. You don't put f***ing pineapple on a pizza. However, in 2017, he was finally forced to try a pizza with pineapple on it, after promising to do so if a certain number of people donated to the Great Ormond Street Hospital. Despite his complaints, protests, and general disgust towards eating a piece, he ultimately goes through with it, with predictable results. Ramsey quickly spits it out before remarking, 
This isn't a pizza. This is a mistake. <laughs> Number five, when he hosted The Nightly Show. Beaver salami. I've never had beaver before. <laughs> well. The Nightly Show had a fantastic premise, featuring a different host each week. For week five of the program's run, the job fell to none other than our favorite foul-mouthed chef, Gordon Ramsay. I don't think there's a single chef that can accept criticism. I can. And what are you talking about? He did a great job and gave viewers some of the short-lived show's most memorable moments. Some of the highlights from Ramsay's week behind the desk include giving his guests a taste test, having James Vanderbeek's head superimposed onto his for a cooking class, and singing a duet with John Legend. The Grammy winner even sings some of Ramsay's most famous insults. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because you didn't f***ing cook it. Number four, when he played Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts. The premise of this Late Late Show skit is pretty simple. Answer your opponent's question truthfully or eat a disgusting dish of their choice. I've eaten worse. <laughs> I've eaten in a couple of your places. Oh. Right. <laughs> Some of the options that were up for grabs when Ramsay faced off against James Corden included salmon ice cream, grasshopper, and cow tongue. Yeah, we know, tasty. The questions were not exactly softballs either, so both men ended up eating their fair share of gross food. You were in the following movies. Peter Rabbit, Emoji Movie, Trolls, rank them from worst to best. <laughs> We particularly enjoyed watching Ramsay scarf down a bull's penis marinated in hot sauce. Gordon, you won't be able to see. <laughs> oh my God! Although, truthfully, we suspect he's had worse food on Kitchen Nightmares. Number three, his Twitter roasts. Gordon Ramsay's not exactly short on opinions, so when people started tweeting him pictures of their homemade meals and asking him to critique them, the internet let out a collective cheer. The result was hundreds of Ramsay Twitter roasts many of which are as savage, if not more so, than his on-screen insults. From insinuating that a tweet came from prison based on the quality of the food, to calling someone's noodle soup, quote, toxic scum on a stagnant pool, Ramsay does not hold back. Then again, the tweets aren't all bad, as evidenced by the time Ramsay responded to a woman's picture of her fiancé's pork loin with the comment, marry him. Number two, making scrambled eggs with Jimmy Kimmel. A small knob. Oh, butter. All right, another knob. You, you're crazy about the knobs, aren't you? When Gordon Ramsay stopped by Jimmy Kimmel Live to teach the talk show host how to make scrambled eggs, one thing became abundantly clear. Jimmy Kimmel is a terrible cook. Ramsay spends the entire segment barking instructions at the clueless host as he struggles to keep his eggs from sticking to the pan. You have two tents. Okay, oh, well, it's because you're yelling at me. <laughs> I didn't know you were this Oh, okay. <laughs> In Kimmel's defense, cooking with Gordon Ramsay would make most people nervous. And truth be told, Kimmel genuinely looks like he'd rather be doing something else. As if the embattled talk show host wasn't already flustered enough, Ramsay chucked the finished product on the floor for being, quote, rubbery. Well, there go our culinary aspirations. Oh no. Seriously, <laughs> frat house in here. Start again. <laughs> Honestly. Start again. Yeah, start again. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. You're not as fun as him, and you never will be. <laughs> darling, darling, crying's not fun. Homer's fun. Well, at least nip to the kitchen it might be a cheese sandwich, can you? You cook. Cock. Haven't you had enough cheese sandwiches? <laughs> An idiot sandwich. Well, let me be frank. She's a rubbish baker. Number one, his appearance on Hot Ones. Since the show's inception, Hot Ones fans have been clamoring for an appearance from Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, because a bit f***ing overcooked. <laughs> it's like eating a mouthful of f***ing sand. The web series, which features celebrities being interviewed while eating insanely spicy chicken wings, finally managed to nab the elusive chef for their season eight premiere. And he did not disappoint. When people have reached their peak in a profession, whether it's Sorry, Kobe I Bryant. That, I think that's a... Uh... I feel like that's burning a new ring on my f***ing ass. <laughs> While the show provides water and milk to guests to help them cope with the heat, Ramsay went ahead and brought a few things of his own, including lemon juice, lime juice, and Pepto-Bismol. And by the end of the interview, he'd emptied them all and had some choice words along the way to describe the experience. All the way through the Hot Ones gauntlet and looking like a million bucks. F*** you. <laughs> okay, real talk, guys. Does pineapple belong on a pizza? Let's hash it out in the comments. But anyway, if you love watching Gordon Ramsay go off, and I know I do, we have tons of related videos that you guys would be an idiot sandwich not to watch. Enjoy!